All right, finalement, uh, problem six. So let's be done and done. So in part A of problem six, it says write the third degree Taylor for f about x equals zero. So x equals zero is our center, and your center in a Taylor polynomial uh, is called A typically, right? So uh, we're saying A is equal to zero. And reminder, uh, a Taylor polynomial is an infinite polynomial that looks like this here, right? Okay, so with a equaling zero, uh, if we see the terms term by term, the first so many terms, that is like with a equals zero, plug in n equals zero, then n equals one, and yada yada, then uh, this is uh, what we're going to get, right? It's going to look like this, and we only need the third degree, so let's show one more term. So I was just like pointing out some important stuff for you to pay attention to, but yeah, here, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, um... This graph here is only useful in two parts in this problem, and that's in this part in finding out what f of zero is and what f prime of zero is. And I think actually it's pretty clever to use the graph and the table. But anyway, um, f of zero is the value of this function, this curve here, at x equals zero. And clearly that's three, right? So f of zero is three. So, uh, and that's what I pointed out slowly, sorry. Um, all right, so that's three and then plus and I did it too fast when I animate it, but whatever we'll live So that's f of zero and then uh, The second place where this graph is useful is for f prime of zero f prime of zero is uh, The slope of f at x equals zero, but that's the same as the slope of the tangent line So if we count the slope of the tangent line using the two lattice points this lattice point and this lattice point so that it's not confusing then we see that we have like a rise of four and a run of negative two, right? Okay, and my animation is not showing the uh, run of negative two clearly, but clearly it's four over negative two, and that's just negative two. So we could backtrack and write a negative two followed by an x because this negative two is f prime of zero, right? Okay, cool. And then from here on out, we do not need the graph at all. All right, so plus uh, for uh, the second derivative at zero, we're given a table of values for the nth derivative at zero. So for the second derivative at zero, uh, we have three here, right? Okay, so um, we have three over two, because two factorial is two, and then x squared, right? Okay, and then it's gonna be minus because this here is the third derivative at zero, and that according to this table is negative 23 over two, so we lead with the minus. And then 23 over 2, but don't forget this 3 factorial that's dividing it. So we have 23 over 2 divided by 3 factorial. That's the same as negative um, 23 over 12, right? Uh, yeah, and then x cubed. So this is it for part A. So let's put it up top. Move on to part B. Let's get rid of this. So part B says this. It says, write the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for each of the x. E to the x has probably the simplest Maclaurin series, and it's equal to it's equal to this, right? Uh, all right, just highlighting. But yeah, e to the x is equal to uh, this infinite sum, and we only need the first non the first three non-zero terms. And it's funny they say that because e to the x doesn't have any zero zero terms anyway. But um, yeah, so that's just plug in n equals zero, then plug in n equals one, and n equals two, and we get that these these are the first three non-zero terms. I use the dot, dot, dot to say that <laughs> this e equal sign holds, but we see the first three non-zero terms. So one, two, three. Yeah, we got them. Okay, then what? Write the second degree Taylor for e to the x times f of x about x equals zero. Even though in part A, they said find the Taylor uh, for f of x at x equals zero, the Taylor at zero is the Maclaurin series, right? So basically they're saying here, find the Maclaurin series for e to the x times f of x. Well, we have the Maclaurin series for e to the x here, and we recall from part A the Maclaurin series for f, and that again was, um, let's go back to part A. Well, first let's copy and paste the e to the x first three terms and uh, that should suffice because here we need uh, the second degree Taylor about zero, therefore the Maclaurin series uh, for e to the x f of x, but it's only the second degree. So these uh, three terms of e to the x times 
uh, maybe uh, three terms of f of x will suffice to get us this second degree, yeah? Okay, so uh, remember from part A that this is what we found to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, so uh, the first four non-zero terms of f of x, Maclaurin series, and so uh, we probably don't need all of them, uh, but let's use like uh, these guys, and uh, once we exceed um, the second degree in multiplying this out, then we'll leave any extras out. But, you know, uh, we can uh, use more and then discard as needed. So at minimum, let's uh, multiply this out. So the multiplication would go distribute one, right? So that would be like, that. do that. And so when we multiply one to uh, this black polynomial, then we're just going to get this black polynomial back. And so let's use a neutral color. So we have this here, right? And then now we distribute x. So that'd be that. And when we do, uh, we get x times minus 2x is, well, actually, sorry, x times uh, 3 first. So that's 3x. And then x times minus 2x is minus 2x squared. And then x times uh, 3 halves x squared is going to be 3 halves x cubed. That's more than we need because it says second degree. And this would get us to a third degree, right? So we actually don't need it, right? So we go, all right, discard that guy. And then we distribute this guy. And we see that we should only distribute by this guy, I mean x squared over 2. And we should only distribute them to here because if we distribute it to the others, then we're going to get x cubed and x to the fourth, right? And that's more than we need, right? So uh, that's what I'm pointing out there. Like, yeah, sorry. I was just showing that that's x cubed and that's more than we need, right? Okay, so... Um, we just do the plus 3 over 2 uh, x squared. And now uh, let's highlight like terms. Those two are like terms. And then these guys are like terms. And so uh, combining like terms, we see that each of the x times f of x Maclaurin series is going to look like that. And I was a little surprised that it worked out so well. So the 3 is 3. Let me make sure I didn't make a mistake. Minus 2x plus 3x. Uh, makes x, right? And then 3 over 2x squared and 3 over 2x squared makes uh, 6 over 2x squared. And that is, uh, uh, yes, that's th 6 over 2x squared is that's a 3x squared. And then we have minus 2x squared. So yeah, I didn't make any mistakes. All right, cool, cool. So it worked out really nicely because that's a simple polynomial, right? All right, cool, cool. And um, so part C says, let h be the function defined by the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. And it says, use the Taylor polynomial, so the Maclaurin series we found in part a, to approximate h of 1. Yeah? OK, so uh, we recall uh, from part a that f was, um, f was, do you have a good memory? Uh, that was it, right? OK. And so uh, we need to integrate f of t from 0 to x to get h of x, right? So uh, we go, all right, so uh, with that, this is um, f of t, and we integrate it, and that's, you know, pretty simple, uh, 3t in the first part, and then minus t squared, and that simplifies to 1 half t cubed, and then this here, right, uh, and that was divide by, add 1, add 4 to the, yeah, okay, okay, get it, like, I'm going too fast, but like, all right, come on. I'll just do it slower. There we go. I did write it. I'm just animating it fast. And yeah, OK. I'll just play fast forward. OK, there we go. Now, when we plug in 0, all the terms have t, so they're all 0. So if we plug in x, and that's the only survivors. So we have that, right? OK. I'll wait for it. <laughs> now I'm too fast for it. <laughs> OK. Um, and so we're going to use this guy to approximate h of 1. So h of 1 is just going to be plug in 1 there, plug in 1 there, plug in 1 there, plug in 1 there. I do not love arithmetic, so I'll let you do that. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's it for part C. And hopefully I've done well enough to justify me skipping the arithmetic. By well enough, I mean in the previous uh, videos uh, and the solution to the 2019 FRQ. So part D is about truncation error. And I have a lot of videos on a convergence of series. In fact, all the videos you need. Uh, and um, I have, in particular, videos on the alternating series test and the truncation error. And so the trun truncation error uh, from the alternating series test is um, what tells us that 
the error and using the first n uh, terms of a particular Taylor polynomial is less or equal to the next unused term. So here, the next unused term would be, I'm obviously going a little too fast, the next unused term would be the term that follows this guy, right? And But what I just showed, right, what I just showed here is uh, f, but uh, we're talking about h, right? So we're looking at h of 1 here. So since we're talking about h, we need to integrate uh, the next unused term from 0 to 1, right? Because uh, that would be h of 1 there. Okay, so I'm actually just going to do the indefinite integral on the next unused term, and the next unused term would be on f, 54 over 4 factorial, uh, t to the fourth, and then dt, right? And so if we integrate this, we get this here, right? Uh, and that's just 54 over 5 factorial times t to the fifth, right? Okay, and uh, if we plug in 1 into it, what we're going to get is uh, that the error in estimating h of 1, so the truncation error associated to h of 1, is less or equal to the absolute value of 54 over 4, over 5 factorial uh, times 1 to the 5th, but 1 to the 5th is just 1, so uh, the absolute value. I have absolute values up here also, right? Okay, and yeah, I'm done because, uh, yeah, like you should check that this is, in fact, less or equal to uh, 0 0.45, but I trust that it is, and yeah, cool. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> take care.